It is my honor to be present here today with the Seaweed uh, Conference here in New Zealand. And it's my first trip to New Zealand. I've been waiting almost for two years for you guys to open up your borders so we will have the opportunity to see and tap into all the exciting innovation and technology that New Zealand is working on and that we also definitely see has a huge contribution to outside of New Zealand's uh, borders. As Claire mentioned, my name is Tanya Hohl, uh, and I'm the general manager of the Hatch Blue uh, offices in Europe, based in Norway, close to both the seaweed industry, but also, of course, also to the salmon farming industry. But I'm part of a large global organization, so our mandate is definitely globally. We have businesses both in Asia and the US and also in Europe. Hatch was actually set up and designed with the purpose in terms of supporting that kind of innovation and technology for the aquaculture sector. And we were set up in 2017. And when we were established in 2017, there were very few companies that were actually supporting investment into aquaculture. So I found it in very interesting in terms of the Bank of New Zealand that they have definitely seen that opportunity that we have also seen in terms of supporting that kind of sustainable development of the industry. For my presentation today, I will talk a little bit about, of course, who Hatch is and how we actually are supporting the seaweed sector, but also maybe put on the venture capital view on why do we actually see this opportunity uh, of investing into, into seaweed. So just for you that don't know Hatch, um, as I mentioned, we are a, both an investment company and also an innovation company. And our entire business has been set up to really to support and to transform the industry in terms of a sustainable development. We have our own investment arm. So our first Hatch fund um, made 37 different investments into technology, also including into seaweed projects. Um, we have now recently launched our second fund, which I will present a little more interest in, in details because it actually is targeting uh, seaweed. And this is an important mechanism, of course, for us to see how we can contribute to invest in these kinds of new sustainable uh, solutions and farm systems that we see can benefit the wider food system. We also have the Hatch Innovation Services, which I am the director of, which is also not only providing investment services and advices, but we're also working with global corporates. So we're working with f huge food um, institutions and, and food companies in terms of how they can actually implicate these uh, interesting compounds and biological solutions that we see coming up from, from seaweed. So having that kind of collaboration with the corporate uh, world is also incredibly important to educate them and to highlight to them in terms of what are the opportunities of seaweed in terms of sustaining their uh, business development into the future. So we really try to work in a very global kind of a partnership model within Hatch, working both with other investors doing co-investments, working with a lot of other global cooperations in terms of offtake and market development of the solutions. And we also work a lot with governments in terms of advising them of the opportunities that we see within the aquaculture and the seaweed sector. And we also provide a lot of business development support. We are really trying to support the industry in multiple factors, but providing that kind of business development support, training both new enterprises, new ventures in terms of how they can successfully succeed in terms of getting funding is a core part of our strategy. So we have run four different global accelerator programs, and we also last year run six different innovation programs, which are all targeted in terms of how we can support new businesses and ventures in terms to scale, but also to be successfully in terms of getting funding uh, to grow their businesses. As mentioned, we are a global organization. We have three offices, but we are a global team. So we really have a quite good global presence in terms of the projects, but also the team members that are working and supporting in terms of innovation and collaboration. This, I think, provides a very good picture and understanding in terms of why we as investors have seen the opportunity within seaweed. 
I think maybe for us as Aho culture people, we, we think that maybe the Aho culture is already a very well-known uh, business and market opportunity. But Aho culture is a very, very small business compared to what we have seen just in comparison into agriculture. So there is a huge need that we see in terms of being able to communicate and to educate the wider investment community in terms of the business opportunity that we have seen. So this is also a core part of the strategy, it's really about educating the wider investment community in terms of what we really see are the challenges of the today's current food system, and then how aquaculture and then seaweed can provide a sustainable solution to support that kind of low carbon uh, food system that we all um, see the potential of in the future. As mentioned, we have recently launched our second fund, the Blue Revolution Fund. This fund is in collaboration with the Nature Conservancy, which also has a regional presence here in New Zealand. This Blue Revolution Fund has set very, very high conservational impact metrics in terms of what will be the financial return mechanism of all of our investments. This is where we are setting a new standard in terms of the aquaculture industry, where our financial returns must be aligned in terms of the conservational and sustainability impact returns. So we are still now in the development to be finalizing our framework in terms of what will be the sustainable and conservational impact metrics that we are now launching for our fund, who has then been developed, as I mentioned, in the collaboration with the Nature Conservancy. And the relevance that this has for the seaweed sector is that we definitely have seen that for us to be able to deliver on these high standards of financial, but also conservational sustainability impact metrics, seaweed we have identified to be the key enabling investment sector. And this is something that we definitely are see is now gaining more and more attention outside the Hatch organization. We have a lot of interest now from the venture capital communities, from other investors that are very curious about the opportunities that lie within seaweed. There is a window of opportunity out there and we have an important role to play across all regional borders in terms of communicating the sustainability impacts, but also the investment opportunities that the seaweed sector can play in terms of transforming, the, transforming our food systems in the future. These are just some of the terms in terms of the financial mechanisms. These are also some of the strategies that we have identified and also just highlighting in terms of the impact targets. So we will have a very strict in terms of KPIs to be measuring all of our impact metrics. And just to do also maybe just in terms of a small um, type of comparison, aquaculture is a very large sector in terms of its market value and market size. But in comparison to other um, peers of other types of industries, we still see that the sector in aquaculture is highly undercapitalized in terms of venture capital investments. So that just emphasizes also uh, how critical important it is to have these kinds of conferences to get together and have that open invitation in terms of the investment, the financial institutions to showcase and to communicate towards them in terms of what the investable opportunities are. We are, as I mentioned, for us, this is a critical part of our investment thesis. But as I mentioned, Hatch also really wants to show to the wider investment communities what we see are the relevance and the contribution of the sector. We have now partnered up with other impact investors and also with the World Bank Group to now come together and bring forward an interesting global market seaweed report that can highlight what could be the investable opportunities within seaweed and what will be the financial returns and also the sustainability impact metrics behind that kind of investment. I find this to be extremely interesting and motivated when we have NGOs and financial banks like World Bank Group because they have such a massive financial mechanisms to really to transform and to support that kind of development of the sector. I have read with high interest in terms of the seaweed report that has been launched uh, from the Initiative of New Zealand 
And we are highly impressed by the work that has been invested into that report. And already we have now started conversations both with CLEAR but also with Cawthorn Institute in terms of how can we build upon that work and investment that has been done into that framework. What I find incredibly interesting is that we align well in terms of what we see are opportunities. So one important part for us is that this market report is not going to be something that's going to duplicate existing work. We're going to build upon that investment that has been done. Another part that has been really important for us is that this cannot be a desktop research exercise. We need to get out there into the field and really get hands-on expertise. How does seaweed actually being farmed? How is it being processed? What are the markets and so on? As you can see from the, from the global map here, we have now recently conducted one of the biggest in-field uh, surveys in terms of going out and visiting all of the major seaweed producing countries now in Asia. This is the first initial step of a large global seaweed in-field study. So we will also be covering both Europe, Africa, and also the US uh, moving forward. So this work has been, as I mentioned, supported and by the funding of both other impact investors, Hatch, and also the World Bank Group. So the supply side will be a very important part in terms of trying to highlight what are the investments that needs to be taken in terms of innovation, in terms of the value chain, in terms of technology, to really to unlock what we see are the commercial opportunities within the sector. The other part of the study is more on the market size. In terms of what are actually the opportunities that we see on the market side. And again, highlighting back to the seaweed report from New Zealand, you already have identified several business opportunities. So this is something that we are now launching by November 2022. It will be an open source report. And as I mentioned, the entire purpose of this report is really to have a knowledge hub that we can communicate towards the larger investment community, what we see are investable opportunities within the seaweed sector, but also what we see are the needs in terms of future technology development. So we really encourage you all to be strong advocates in terms of using this website in terms for us to be bringing that kind of global message across the wider uh, community. The second focus, as I mentioned, will be the market report. That is something that we are also uh, in collaboration with the World Bank Group. And that report will then be finalized around February. Again, an open source report. Everything will be web-based online. And this is all about for us to try to disseminate that communication towards the investment community, what we see are feasible market opportunities. We're also trying to see, identify what is the current market structure on the global scale, but also trying to identify what are short-term, medium, and long-term investable opportunities. We are, at the moment, working on a long list of what we have seen to be opportunities. And these, as I mentioned, align very well in terms of the findings of the New Zealand Seaweed Framework Report. The exercise that we have now is to take a deeper dive into all of these different work streams and then to see, categorize them in terms of what we see are investable opportunities within a different kind of a timeline. I find it really interesting that based on the meetings and conversation that I have had here in New Zealand this past week, we have already now engaged with Cawthorn Institute to see how we can build further upon on the knowledge and expertise that Cawthorn has within the sector and the space. I had the great pleasure yesterday to be visiting the aquaculture research park of Cawthorn and there's no doubt that there is so much relevant expertise and knowledge and something that we really want to see how we can bring into this project and build upon the expertise that New Zealand has grown within the sector. The last topic that also, especially the World Bank Group, has specifically requested that we take a much more deeper dive into is, is in terms of the ecosystem services, also aligning well with the seaweed report that you have launched, but really trying to see what is the business models in terms of the ecosystem services. So both in terms of carbon sequestration, nitrogen uptake, biodiversity. 
So this will be a specifically chapter in terms of the global seabed project to see how we can identify the business models, but also what could be the investment. Just for a little bit of inspiration behind that business case, ourselves, as I mentioned, we already have done 37 different investments, and one of our investments has been in a microalgae company. We have also done investments in seaweed, but this microalgae company I find highly to be inspirational. This, this microalgae company was actually targeting nutraceuticals, um, the animal feed market. But they very quickly saw that there was a huge business opportunity within the carbon credit markets. So they had completely pivoted their entire business model to be only focusing on carbon credits. The company is called Brilliant Planet, and I think that they are definitely one of their front runners in terms of developing carbon credits as a blue um, as, a, as an opportunity uh, for that. And they already are engaging with large global corporations in terms of selling their carbon credits uh, to them. So moving forward, I truly hope and believe that this visit to New Zealand is just the beginning in terms of a more global journey that we can have together in terms of how we can communicate, as I mentioned, the opportunity that we see in seaweed, but also to help the sector to attract that private investment that will be very critical in terms of monetizing other opportunities that we see.